It's time to throw some shade. Hi guys, it's Teresa. Welcome back to my channel. So after the smashing success, if I do say so myself, of my uh, reading booktubers favorite books of 2019 video, some of you have asked me to do something similar again. And to be honest, I'd already kind of been thinking about doing this exact video as just sort of the flip side to the favorites. If I'm gonna do a video reading booktubers favorite books, I think the only logical sequel to that video is this one, reading the books that people hated in 2019. Now I know from the get-go it sounds a lot less positive than my other video, but if you watch that video, and if you haven't, you should, because it's pretty cool, you'll know that I didn't actually love almost any of those books. I found two new favorites and that's it. I read 10 books for that video. So not that great in terms of percentages. Instead of trying to find new favorites as I did with the last video, the purpose of this one is kind of just more giving these books a second chance, if you will, because I wouldn't typically purchase a book um, or like want to read a book based on another person's review when I say that they hate it. I think that's pretty obvious. And to make this video a little bit more palatable to myself and more doable and like less like this really daunting task that I'm never gonna ever start, let alone finish, I decided to narrow it down to six books instead of 10. I also picked different booktubers for this video to get a little bit more variety in there. And so yeah, without further ado, I guess I'm just gonna introduce you to the books that uh, I'm reading for this challenge. As always, both my worst books of 2019 as well as everyone else's worst books of 2019 video will be linked in the description. So go ahead and check them out. If you aren't subscribed to them yet, go subscribe. These are all amazing people. The first person whose most hidden books I'm gonna read is Read with Cindy, and the first book I chose is Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. I've been wanting to read this book for a long time just so that I know what the hype is all about and the hate likewise. And I just need to finish it for this challenge to say that I read it. I can tick it off on my to-do list as a booktuber. I can finally become a real booktuber who has read this and then we can all move on with our lives. I don't particularly expect to actually enjoy this and so my expected rating for this one is about two stars. The next book I chose from her is A Pride by Evie Saboy. This is a Pride and Prejudice retelling that is set I think in Brooklyn or something just like a US city in the modern time. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it follows an African-American family um, who just live in their like little suburb and they're really protective of it. And then a really rich family moves in, you know, Darcy, Th that whole storyline happens around the, that other family basically. So um, I don't really have particular expectations for this book either way. I haven't heard that much about it and I don't, just don't know going into it what I'm gonna think. So my expected rating for this one is gonna be a three star. The next person who I'm gonna choose for this challenge is Sophie from Sophisticated Books with Sophisticated Books. I can never pronounce that correctly, but it's a really good pun, I appreciate it. Her case is very special because her and I, we have like really, really opposite reading taste, like pretty much the exact opposite. I watched her most hated videos, no, her most hated books video, and full disclosure, like some of my favorite books of the year were in that video. So <laughs> this is kind of my like saving grace here because I'm definitely expecting to enjoy the books that she hated a lot more than the books that other booktubers hated, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm actually kind of looking forward actively to reading the books that she disliked. And the first one that she chose is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden, which I think is really interesting because apart from Sophie, I don't think I've heard anyone, almost anyone say negative things about this. This is almost universally beloved. It's a Russian inspired, like fairy tale-esque story. I don't really remember exactly what she said in the video and I didn't want to like rewatch the video before going into the book so that I didn't have any like preconceived notions. So. I don't know exactly. We'll look at the end of the video to, to check exactly what her gripes were with this book and to see like if I agree or disagree or if I just like completely 
um, perceive them differently. And I think at this point, I'm giving this an estimated rating of about four stars. The second book I chose from her video is a bit more of a wild card, and that is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I have had a very rocky history with Lee Bardugo, and I wasn't actually at all ever gonna even read this. And then I decided to do this video, and so now I'm doing it after all. I have enjoyed the Grisha trilogy at the time of reading it, but that was ages ago and Six of Pros I didn't enjoy, so I don't really know going into this what I'm gonna expect. It could be really good, it could be really bad. My expectations are kind of on the lower end, so I'm gonna say somewhere between two and three stars for this one, just because I don't think that, um, you know, based on our history, my history with Lee Bardugo, uh, that I'm gonna really gel with this one. The next person I chose was Rachel Marie, and from her video I really didn't know it's immediately what to pick because there were several options but I ended up settling on first Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. Again, a book that I had no intention of actually reading. Um, this is a male-male romance between the son of the President of the United States and a prince a British prince basically. Aside from her review, I had heard kind of mixed things about it and it just wasn't really my thing. It felt a little bit too ridiculous from the setup to begin with. So this is again a difficult case to like estimate a rating for, but I'm gonna say either one or two stars. I don't think I'm gonna really like this one. And the second book I picked from her was Serpent and Duff by Shelby Mahorin, I think is her name. This is a YA fantasy romance and even before watching her video, I'd heard like kind of mixed things about it. Again, a lot of people really like it, but then again, this isn't super my thing anymore, so I'm really not sure. I'm gonna go somewhere between two and three stars for my expected rating. And that concludes the six books that I am planning to read for this challenge. The rest of the video will mostly be in vlog format, just like my other video, and I will just show you the journey as I uh, soldier through these books that uh, I expect to not like all that much. Enjoy! So I haven't even filmed the intro for this video yet, but I'm doing it. I've just spontaneously decided, downloaded Red, White and Royal Blue, ready to get into it. I just checked. <laughs> the ebook has like over 400 pages, which seems very excessive, and I hope I can get through it. We'll see. Wish me luck, cross our fingers, let's get to it. I'm currently like 40% into Red, White and Royal Blue and I don't hate it. Um, I totally see all the issues that Rachel had with it. I think especially if you're from England like, and you know the royal family a lot more like than I do. <laughs> Um, I totally can see how this is like really offensive. Honestly, not just to the royal family, but to all of England, because it, the main character Alex like just constantly hates on Britain, calling it a stupid country, calling it all kinds of bad things. So it does bother me, but probably not as much as it did her. Um, also, I think the book is too long, and there's too many side things that I don't care about besides the romance. I wish it just focused on that and like. I'm sorry, a washing machine is really loud. Um, I wish you kind of just focused on that and wouldn't go so much into all the other details about politics and like, I just don't care about it. So I have been skim reading parts of it because I don't care. <laughs> but other than that, I don't think it's terrible. I think the writing is decent. I think the dialogue isn't super cringy and I really am rooting for the romance. So there's that little update. Hi, I'm about to head to the library to finally get a library card. I've just found out that my library actually, my <laughs> future library actually uses Overdrive. So I think I can get most of the books that I wanna read for this video on there. So I'm back home. I'm really pleased with that. Um, that turned out really well. I got my library card and um, immediately like got in, logged into Overdrive and all that and checked it out. And I placed a hold on Ninth House and Serpent and Dove, both of which I'll have to wait for probably two to four weeks, which is fine because I don't really want to burn through these books that are supposedly, supposedly so bad um, as quickly as I did the good ones. Good ones? <laughs> um, so I think that's fine to, to just kind of take my time a little bit more and uh, do it slower. But I also downloaded Pride, the audiobook, immediately. Not downloaded, but I... I uh, could listen to the audiobook for Pride by Yuzaboy immediately, so I just started that on the way back, 
and I'm interested to see how it goes. I think it's only six hours, which is really short. Um, so I should be able to get through that pretty quickly. Hi, hello. I finally finished uh, Red, White and Royal Blue. It took me quite a long time considering it's a romance. I typically read those quicker, but this book is so long. Like, I don't need a 400 page romance ever, ever again. Thank you very much. Um, I think I'm giving it like 2.5 stars. I don't think it's the worst, but it does have some really big issues, um, or at least I have issues with it. I think, first of all, as I said, it's too long. Cut that shit down, please. Second of all, I didn't really feel like it knew what it was, what it wanted to be. It was obviously like the romance was the focus, but then it was trying to discuss politics and just go into like a lot of very different directions. There were like a lot of subplots that I didn't care about and as I said I skim read a lot of it I did especially the last like 100 pages I was like over it I didn't care anymore um it was just too much random superfluous stuff around the thing that I actually was here for basically and that was kind of annoying and that kind of goes hand in hand with the fact that I feel like it's just really difficult to pin this down because going into it, I mean, just reading the premise, the first son of the United States and a prince falling in love, like, you expect a sort of, like, Anne Hathaway, Vanessa Hudgens movie vibe from it, right? Like, super absurd, really out there, <laughs> not something that's at all really realistic. Um, and then that is obviously what this book is starting off the direction this book is starting off at but it then tries to go realistic but also not realistic because it's just too idealistic okay i have to stop using words that end with ick <laughs> it's just really difficult to get invested in the story and you know fully commit to it when on one hand it's it's presenting a completely idealistic view of the world and you know no repercussions at all international or national for something like this um leaked emails not causing any harm to anyone um a lot of like you know just this would never happen type vibes but on the other hand it's trying to like really hard to be relevant discussing current issues um and as i said kind of getting political with it and i just i feel like that just doesn't work together like i feel like this book doesn't really have a purpose um some nothing that i would really recommend to read it for i wouldn't even read it for the romance because even though it is really really cute and honestly there's there are quite a few like really funny moments my favorite moment is definitely when alex's mom gives him <laughs> makes for him like a powerpoint presentation about like international affairs like oh it's so hilarious that's really funny i'm gonna give it that it's definitely funny at times but as i said since there's so much superfluous stuff to the romance i don't even think that it's worth to read it for the romance especially since the main characters have like very little personality especially henry alex has a shit personality <laughs> i hated him from the start because he literally just hates the UK for no apparent reason, as I said, and he just then quickly changes that because he realizes he has feelings for Henry and like it doesn't make any sense. Um, and then Henry has like no personality, so except being cute. So yeah, I don't see the point of this book. Also a little update on Pride by Ibiza Boy. I've listened to about 10 chapters um, of the audiobook and I'm also not impressed. What was I expecting? I'm purposefully reading books that people don't like, I guess, but <laughs> still, I don't love it, I don't like the writing, I think, I've read other reviews and everyone's saying like there's so much, so much exposition and that is definitely true, like I just, and my main issue though is that I just really don't feel the magic of the real Pride and Prejudice, like it just feels like a soulless version of it, um, I don't like the main character at all, <laughs> I think she's a real asshole most of the time um like pretending to protect to want to protect her sister from a guy but actually just like wanting to keep her sister to herself and like i know the prejudice aspect is like a big point of the story right but like oh my god she could not be more like hateful of everyone who isn't her basically or like who isn't living her exact life 
it's all about her and her family that's like the center of the universe and if that's not what everybody else agrees with then they're obviously an idiot and like oh I hate her I hate her so much so I'm not actually sure if I'm even gonna finish the audiobook I do want to but it's a pain in the ass to listen to and I don't think it's that well written so we'll see hi I wanted to update you on this challenge and I'm currently now reading the Bear and the Nightingale. I know I'm filming this on my phone. I freaking hate that it flips it. Don't know how else to do it because I'm too lazy to get my camera. Oops. I started this last night and I honestly couldn't stop reading. I'm on page 135, I think, so far. I'm actually really enjoying it. It's giving me mad Naomi Novik vibes. Like, she's even blurbed it, um, which makes a lot of sense. It reminds me so much of Spinning Silver, kind of that mixed with uprooted actually so just like both of those books thrown into one um it's really good i think it's well written it's just super slow as well but i don't mind too much because that's you know again a thing in no naomi no mix books and it never really bothered me except for a little bit with spinning silver because it was just a little much <laughs> on that note i think i'm dnfing pride just because I, I honestly have zero interest in the book anymore. I never want to pick up the audiobook. Even when I go somewhere, like, I just don't want to listen to it. I'd rather listen to anything else <laughs> than that audiobook. And I just don't really think it's worth my time. Even though there's, like, only, I don't know, four hours left in a six-hour audiobook. I just don't see it going anywhere. I don't see it doing anything for me. And you know what? If I can DNF a book in a video about like reading people's favorite books, I can DNF a book <laughs> in a video about reading people's least favorite books. Hi, it's the next day and as I predicted, I really, really, really like The Bear and the Nightingale. I finished it this morning. I think it's so good. I'm giving it 4.5 stars even, like higher than my original estimate because I think it's so well written. It's such a good story like I love these types of fairy tales it's set in Russia and it just has such a like tangible atmosphere that I couldn't put this down I loved it it is very slow paced and I think that actually is like what this author can do really well because the few action scenes that were there were actually the weakest bits of the book in my opinion but other than that, I loved it. It's so good. Oh my god. <laughs> I did really, really enjoy it. And I immediately ordered the sequels. <laughs> Oops. But it's so freaking good. I loved it. I still haven't watched Sophie's review. But I can tell. Like, I feel like considering the other books where we had, like, diverging opinions on, I totally understand why, like, this wouldn't be to her reading taste. But it definitely was to mine. And I absolutely loved it. Oh my god. Mm. Hello. <laughs> friends so I took the weekend off from reading bad books and I'm back it's Monday uni starts today which is gonna be very stressful we'll see um, so this is my first week back for the new semester basically and uh, I guess after this week I'll kind of know more about how busy I'm gonna be because I'm also doing an internship and we'll just see how it goes but Today I wanted to jump into my next bad book <laughs> um, and that is going to be A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas. If you didn't know, I actually started this book back in January, I think, and I'm already on page 90, but I stopped reading not because it was like objectively terrible. But just because it was really, really, really boring, I didn't really feel like there was anything happening that like I cared about <laughs> or that I should particularly like want to know more about. But I have to read it for this video, so it's going to happen and I'm going to try to do it now. I think it's going to help me that I don't have to start from the very beginning, for sure. So I'm back at home. I survived my first class and I wanted to give you a bit of an update. I'm currently on page 160, so I read about 70 more pages today. 
it's going very slow because I'm genuinely just looking for things to distract me from this because I don't want to read it. <laughs> it's really like just so superficial and so on the nose and like anything that you expect to happen happens and like I don't know I just feel like this book is like one string of situations that are specifically designed to make Feyre look as good as possible which is really tragic especially since I hate her so 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 much like she's the worst She's such a victim complex. She just won't shut up about how hard her life is when she's just been enabling her family's abuse of her this entire time. She's just the worst. Her family's even worse, but it doesn't excuse her. And I just hate it. <laughs> I hate everything about it. And uh, I'm still just mainly bored. Well, at least she uses whom correctly. That's something. They're just getting back from the lake. And A, does Tamlin have nothing better to do than to just like run around the kingdom with her all day and like bathe in a lake of starlight? I mean, Jesus Christ. And secondly, Lucian has just said that Tamlin told him that Feyre shot, like that her first shot was to save the Surio, is that what it's called? Instead of herself. And I just checked, it's not possible for... Tamlin to know that because he wasn't actually there yet when she did it. So, just saying, seems fishy. I feel entirely betrayed by the fact that she didn't put the rest of this poem in here. Like, what? Why, why, okay, why would you start? I mean, I get like, yes, it's dirty. I don't care. <laughs> I want to read the rest. I want to read the rest. It is such a cool concept. Who puts only part of a poem in the book? And then it's like, oh, there's like four more stanzas, but I'm just not going to tell them to you. Okay. I am not amused. I'm not amused. So first day of my internship went well, but... I got there at 1 and I didn't eat lunch and then kind of lost track of time and I didn't leave until 5 and I barely drank anything so when I got home I had the biggest headache. Also we found out today that all universities are going to be closed starting tomorrow because of coronavirus which is good because uh, I mean it's scary but it's good that I don't have to go to uni but I still have to go in for my internship which defeats the purpose, I guess. I don't know, but apparently um, that's still happening. So, yeah. I only am going to work like 15 hours a week and I can do some of it from home, so it's not a big deal. But, like, I still don't understand the logic of, like, yeah, uni's closed, but you people are still going to come. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not going to read any more Akatar today because I don't want to torture myself anymore having already such a headache so instead i'm gonna listen to a different audiobook and just chill in on here on the couch and hopefully continue my journey through some horrible books soon hi guys so i've taken a bit of a break from actually reading books for this challenge because you know it's not that fun to read books that you're expecting to dislike um and also, yeah, I was just really struggling with Akatar. <laughs> I'm still not finished. I haven't continued in a while. Um, but finally, my overdrive um, hold for Ninth House came through. Hopefully, it's at least somewhat enjoyable because like making it through 800 pages of something that you hate is really difficult. Um, and I really don't want to DNF another thing. So hopefully, that'll be fine. Um, as you might know, the corona situation has worsened significantly and like public life in Austria is basically shut down to a complete minimum. So I am home a lot. So I think I can push through this fairly quickly, but at the same time, I need to like actually want to read it for that to happen. So cross our collective fingers that I don't full on hate it from the very beginning. Okay, so I've read the first 100 pages of that 800 page ebook. So I'm guessing, I think that the paperback or like the hardcover is about 450 or so pages. So it's like just over 50 pages of like an actual book, which it felt so much longer. I don't know, like it felt like 
of like an actual 100 pages. Um, I will say the book really throws you in like at the deep end and it takes a long time to figure out any of what's going on. <laughs> Only now am I sort of getting into the swing of things and where I feel like, okay, I get like the main, you know, contention of the book who Alex is, what she's doing, what's happening at Yale with these secret societies. It's very convoluted and it really just, the world building is very, I guess it's more show than tell because it just kind of drags you along for the ride and you just figure it out as you go. But also it does take some time to get used to. And that's, I think, why I was so slow reading the book at first, because I was like, wait, what, what does this mean? Who is this person? What does this relate to? So here's a little update on Ninth House. I'm currently 42% through the book, chapter 11. I'm honestly having really mixed feelings about it because I'm generally enjoying it. I think the premise is really interesting and the story is interesting, the characters are interesting but there's just something about it I find tedious and I think it's that it's very slow paced and just there's so much jumping around in time like the first the book starts with a moment that's like way in the future I think and then it goes back to the now time but then it also jumps between the now time and the past continuously like every other chapter so basically we have like three different points in time that I at least like know about that I'm like that I, like, I'm somewhat following in the back of my head and, and it's just too much I don't need that I don't want that and I'm finding it really difficult that I'm supposed to get to know Darlington just through these flashbacks and actually Alex as well I just I'm somebody I like to have most things in chronological order as much as that makes sense and I just I would have liked to just experience this together I don't need like two strings of a story basically, two separate stories in one following the same characters but at different times. That's what this is and I'm not enjoying that. I wish it was just like one story in the right order and that's it because the present doesn't really reveal that much about the main character and so you have like every other chapter it's like okay now we're just like focusing on the mystery or whatever and then the next chapter oh, okay now we get more time on Alex and Darlington and the whole system of what's actually like behind this all and yeah i just don't know that that was a good decision to make to like split it up this way and i don't like that darlington is just gone <laughs> in the present i hope because i actually really like him and i like their dynamic so far and i just wish there was more time for that in everything and yeah it's just slow it's just really really slow and i feel like i read a lot already i'm like almost halfway through but I still have so much ahead of me and I kind of don't feel super motivated for it but also I am liking it and I want to like know more and the thing is this is supposed to be like a five book series or something so I imagine maybe the first book is just gonna be really dense on like world building and then hopefully later in the book and also in the sequels the story is gonna pick up a bit more but so far there just isn't that much plot and it's yeah I don't know I don't know not the biggest fan but I was also I don't hate it hello it's like a couple days later I think from when I last vlogged I'm very happy to report that I finished ninth house hello I did it yay and surprisingly I actually really really enjoyed it I think it's a really good book it has all of the markings of being a really fun and entertaining, that's the same thing, series. Um, I think the f as a first book it's fine but it does have some issues that I do hope the sequels will kind of um, get a hold off and fix. The main thing I think is the pacing. Um, as I said, I think it's at times it's really really slow, like there were times when I would just constantly be checking the page number seeing where i was at hoping that like it will move i just couldn't get fully into the story at those moments but then other times i like read whole chapters because they were so gripping without ever once thinking about oh my god how much do i have left because i was so into it so it kind of is weird in that sense that it kind of switches back and forth between like 
high action, very interesting, very like new developments, mystery solved, that kind of thing that kind of keeps you reading. And then other times it's so slow. And I think especially this being the first book, there's so much exposition that needs to be done. Um, there's so much world building and, you know, areas being described like to the T to the smallest detail and I must say I found that was a bit too much. And then another thing that also kind of falls into pacing is that I think the ending is really strange. The ending or what seemed to be the ending happened about I think 150 pages or so from the actual ending of the book and that felt really weird to me because it felt like the climax and then it felt like it's over now but then there's still so much story to go and in that last little bit of story like the last 100 pages so much happens and so much is revealed and like there's plot twists and new developments and completely new directions that we haven't even begun to think in in the first section the first section being the first 700 pages so that was really really weird and i think the book would have benefited more from that being more spaced out i guess and it could have helped the pacing issue that i mentioned earlier this is just speculation but that might be that the author only came up with these things so late in the book or she didn't really know how to space it out better but honestly in a sense this felt to me like two books in one because there were just two different issues <laughs> that we were dealing with in one and i know it's not entirely true because there's more to it, it's all connected and stuff like that, but that's just how it felt. Like reading it, I know plot-wise it's all connected, but it felt from the pacing, it felt like two different stories that were being told. But overall, I'm very, very pleasantly surprised by this book. I really enjoyed it. I think I'm giving this like four stars actually. Um, I liked it. This is definitely one of the best, if not the best book Lee Bardugo has ever written. So that leaves us with only two books left to read for this challenge. I tweeted yesterday that I felt like I've been reading the, the books on this TBR for 30 years <laughs> because that's what it felt like because I'm so slow. So I still have to finish Akatar. Sometime I have to force myself to do that. I think that's honestly just going to be the last thing because also today um, my overdrive hold on Serpent and Dove came through today, so I'm basically just gonna jump into that immediately. So it's time for a little update. I've read about a hundred ebook pages um, so far, and I don't hate it, surprisingly. I think the writing is decent, even though the word brethren is used way too frequently. Like, please just come up with something else. I'm sure there's plenty of synonyms, other words you could use, but ugh, literally every page I can't. Um, but other than that, I think it's fun. Um, I like the magic system. It seems really interesting. I also like that it's really fast paced. I think this kind of pacing is what I need after Ninth House. <laughs> um, kind of just something that's literally only action pretty much. There's very little exposition, little world building. But right now it doesn't even bother me that much. Um, I do think that there should be more, but I just want the action right now. Like, if I were to read this at a different time, I think I'd be more upset at the lack of world building, but I'm just not, I just, I don't want any. <laughs> it's really weird. This isn't normally what I think about a book like that, but in this case, I just want something that's quick and fast and easy. I think that there are some moments that are really ridiculous and convenient um, so far. But also, I think that this could just be mindless fun. Remember how I just said that this book had ridiculous moments? I swear to God, the way that this marriage between Reed and... What's her face? Uh, Lou comes about, tops any ridiculous meter that you could possibly have. Okay, I'm on page 170 and I just wanted to give you a quick update. Um, Something that does really, really annoy me with this book is that it falls into this trap that honestly so many fantasies fall into and I don't even think that it's like necessarily a trap. I think the authors do it on purpose and it's really annoying. It's basically where they set the fantasy in like a historical inspired setting and then have the main female character um, basically set herself apart from every other woman 
of her time essentially by being a 21st century woman in her demeanor, in her language, in her beliefs and it's ridiculous. I think it's first of all extremely unfeminist because it basically blames and shames these other women for being a, a product of their own time right for for not being um, special enough to have the same attitude and it's also just completely unrealistic and there is a way to write strong female characters without having them automatically be modern women when that's not at all what would suit the timeline and the setting of the book and i think it's so unnecessary and and we should stop doing that because it's very easy it's extremely easy because we all we all know like oh this is feminist and you know all that stuff like we have this knowledge with this experience we have these beliefs and these morals and it's so easy to just copy paste them on a character that's not even living in our time instead of trying to think okay how could this person be a product of their time but still utilize the you know skills and the upbringing and whatever that she has how can this person still be a good person and likable person and not a pushover um, using the skills and the things that are provided to her by her time if that makes sense and this just bothers me this comes up in so many books i think it's it's truly terrible and uh it has to go okay full disclosure the more i read the more this book is falling in my favor um i it doesn't make any sense like you guys know that in my opinion that's the ultimate sin a book that just doesn't make sense within its own premise its own setup its own ideology whatever the uh you know i've read 240 pages or so 40 30 something like that 230 pages and for 230 pages uh, I keep forgetting their names because I'm an idiot. Read. Um, and basically all the chasseurs are all very are true like zealots. They're extremists. They're extremely religious. They're, you know, extremely testy about um, anything relating to sexuality. Like they're like little children in that regard, basically. And then Read just handed Lou a book and made a joke about there being a love scene in the book after I had just spent 230 pages getting to know this person as somebody who's really who wouldn't even pick up a book that had something in that let alone like make light of it all of a sudden like it's not like character development it's just like out of the blue and I'm like what this isn't the person that we've just been talking about this entire time. It makes no sense. And this is really the thing. Like, just a few scenes ago, they were in the church. And Jean-Luc, who's another chose, I don't know, I don't speak French. Forgive me my pronunciation. But basically, like, Lou was being an idiot because she's always an idiot. Oh, my God, she behaves like a petulant child all the time. I hate her. I mean, standing up for herself is one thing, but she's just, like, annoying. She's so annoying. I can't. But anyway, so she's making trouble in church, like, you know, moving around, scoffing at things that the priest says, and like, just try to blend in a little bit. Like, you're being so obvious that you hate all this. It's it's fine. Keep it keep it inside. You can keep some things inside. That's a possibility. Not to her, but I'm just saying theoretically. So anyway, she's doing that. And obviously Reed is annoyed, as he should be. Not just annoyed, but like personally offended because this is his religion this is his life and that's his wife making fun of it but also misbehaving and disobeying him when all of them have been taught that it's like the biggest good like a woman is supposed to be obedient and all that stuff and then jean Luc just finds it funny <laughs> and that really was the moment where i was like this is kind of like high school like this book is set at high school except it's pretending to be a fantasy setting that's like I don't even know, the 1600s. Pick a premise, pick a time, and stick to it. And the anachronistic stuff, the way that they talk sometimes, like they will use words where I'm like, this isn't real. Like that's so jarring. Like for example, Lou makes a point to use very foul language, which I could understand if it were like 
appropriate language for the time, but she says things like the ass crack of dawn, which definitely didn't originate before the 21st century. And I am a grown ass woman. And I'm like, expressions like that just straight up pull me out of the story because I'm like, this isn't, this isn't, this isn't real. I know none of this is real, but like, you know what I mean? None of this makes sense within the con context of the story at all whatsoever. <sighs> so yeah, I'm trying to retain the sense of fun um, and lightheartedness that I was talking about earlier because yes, this book is just straight up like fast food, right? Fast food for the brain. That's my favorite term to describe certain books. And I'm trying to read it as that and like not focus on, on the bad stuff too much. But also it's just glaringly there and I don't know. Hello friends! It's your obligatory I'm filming a video so I have to update my vlog update. I just finished filming the Spring TBR, also the intro for this video where I'm pretending like I haven't already read half these books. But once you get to the point in this video, the illusion will be lifted. So. Who cares? Cross my fingers for Akatar because I'm like really dreading that one. But to be honest, I'm now 50% through Serpent and Dove and it's really starting to become a chore for me because I'm not enjoying it at all. I think that all the things I said earlier apply obviously and I've just instantly become dis disillusioned. I thought the start was really strong but like even the magic system that I was like praising earlier, I don't think it's that good after all because it's not that like well structured there's not that much information on it which goes along with the like lack of glaring lack of world building and it just doesn't really make that much sense like i don't understand the rules are there even rules who knows i don't even think the author knows exactly what the rules are and i just i'm just annoyed at like the characters not behaving according to their own personalities as they had been established previously it's a whole thing hello friends it's night time I've been successfully dodging, continuing to read Serpent and Dove all day, uh, trying to find other things. I even downloaded TikTok in an attempt to not have to read this book. That's saying something, I think. So I decided to grab a Desperados. I know it looks like it's Corona beer. It's not. You know how the whole point of the book is that Louise is a witch and is trying to hide that? And like, that's like everything that it revolves around it's like oh my god this is so dangerous for her first of all she makes no attempts to like actively conceal it and then second of all someone actually finds out like the first person that finds out finds out off screen and also is then just instantly okay with it and i didn't even initially realize that he knew um it was just kind of mentioned in offhand and ways like oh of course he now knows but he's fine with it for whatever reason we just not we just not gonna delve into it he's just like oh fine i guess uh 16 years of indoctrination and ideology haven't left a mark on me at all i just i'm over it now yay <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous i'm sorry i can't i can't i want to finish the book i might end up like filming a rant review for it as well if i still have enough steam left after the vlog um, we're like going to spoilers and stuff as well. Not that there is much because it's so boring too. Hi friends. So it's obviously been a minute. It is Thursday the 26th and uh, I still have not completed this video. Hello me. Um, the last week was really busy because I had a lot to do for my internship and by kind of like 5-6 p.m. I'm so tired that I don't want to read anymore. Especially when the book that you have to read is that guitar because let me tell you I finished Serpent and Dove. I finished it a couple days ago, like actually more than a couple days, I don't know. I finished it a while ago and I obviously hated it. I had to like, I wanted to DNF it so badly because of, pff, I hated it so much, but I was like, no, I have to at least skim read. I read like, I skim read the last like 200 or so pages of the ebook um because i was like i can't just dnf it i need to like have some sort of data to go off of because i still want to do an individual rant review for it haven't done from that one yet either <laughs> anyway let's give you an update on akatar i am 
209 pages into it so i'm like halfway through it's so bad like i hate it it ha it does like all the things that i hate in relationships basically first of all they're way too familiar with each other way too quickly like they're supposed to be enemies or at least like there's supposed to be some sort of threat some danger like he's literally captured her against her will so like for them to go to be like best buddies and like having sexual thoughts about each other in like a matter of minutes it's insane and i hate it i don't even know like she's been there two days maybe and then she's already thinking oh this is not the tamlin i know and then when he goes back to being normal However, she would know what that is, but when he does, she's like, oh, finally, I have my Tamlin back. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? First of all, you don't have him. Second of all, you don't even know what normal is for him. And third of all, why do you care? He's your captor. You shouldn't be this emotionally attached to him already. Like, it's insane. And then how to use jealousy as, like, the defining factor of how much they care about each other. It's like, oh, I hate that. Like, being jealous can be used as a plot device i guess it can be used when someone's in a relationship or even before they are when they already have feelings for each other but it shouldn't it should maybe happen when they like you know when the person a feels like person b is like doing something with person c so they're jealous of that but not when they just mention random women or random men or like talk about that the fact that they have had sex with other people like that's not a side of a healthy good relationship on the contrary that's really toxic and also insane because again none of these emotions none of these feelings are founded because they don't know each other like they just met and not even under the best circumstances so like i hate it so much and the thing is i could actually enjoy romance like even if i just read the book for the romance alone i probably like I don't even know, like, I can't do that, it's not like I'm incapable of doing that, but, like, the romance is so bad, it's just so bad. I also hate Lucian's character, because he's just, like, the, he is, like, the, the most stereotypical role in any romance, which is basically, any romance like this, which is basically the sidekick, the male sidekick, that, like, just is endlessly amused by the shenanigans that the female person i'm just gonna say female and male a lot too now because <laughs> there are certain influences in my life right now that the female is like getting up to and he's just like oh oh vera <laughs> she's hilarious isn't she oh this is so funny <sighs> it's not though it's not it's just annoying oh my god i hate it can you tell i hate it so um yeah, I set myself the goal to finish this book tomorrow because the Royal Weekender, the book, book tea trials is happening Saturday and Sunday and I just want this book to be done. I want this video to be done before that. I want to upload it. I haven't even edited a second of this yet, so that's going to be totally fun um, for me to do tomorrow. But I just want to, I want, just want this to be over. So, and this is unfortunately the only way through to get through that is to get through this book. Wish me luck, guys. Wish me luck. I think I found the best method that works for me how to read this book and it's to literally just read like the first half first sentence slash first half of every sentence of every paragraph that's how I've been getting through that book like honestly nothing happens in this the first thing that like actually happens is like on page 300 uh, no joke <laughs> like this entire book is a prologue. It's, they go to the lake and they go lie on the grass and fair paints and Talon is brooding and then there's random attacks that you're not invested in and uh, you, there's just no story here. It's so tragic. But I like my new method. It's helping my mental health. <laughs> And uh, it's helping this challenge, so now I just have to do the same for another 100 pages. And then I can finally toss this into the trash. <laughs> okay, first of all, why does everyone want Fira so badly? She's not that great. And second of all... <sighs> I love this scene right here where Reason is talking to her about healing her arm 
and her having to come live with him for two months of the year uh two months not two months wait two weeks of the month not two months of the year that would be much more reasonable but she's literally like okay wait let's do it just two weeks i'm paraphrasing and it's like just two weeks two teensy tiny weeks with me every month is all i ask what the fuck are you talking about Two weeks is like half the month. That's like half her life. She's gonna be spending with him. What the fuck? <laughs> In what universe do I live where like two weeks every month isn't basic, like isn't a long ass time? That's insane. I mean, why? I mean, I know I'm like questioning too many things about the book that doesn't tr even try to make a whole lot of sense as it is, but like, what? This book is so shit, guys. Hi, friends. It's the next day and just in time. On time? In time? I don't know. I finished Akatar. Um, I kind of kept going with my system until actually the, the part where she's like under the mountain. Like, honestly, as I said, that's the only interesting section of the entire book. It's like the last 80 pages or so. Um, and I actually like didn't skim read most of that. I read like fully read it um, because it was actually like engaging and there were things happening and I was like oh and also I realized <clears throat> I realized that people prefer recent over Tamlin is because he's just a much more interesting character and I think Sarah J Mass agrees and she just wrote him a lot better like she definitely you can tell she spent a lot more time on him than on Tamlin like Tamlin hasn't got any personality I don't even know he doesn't have anything. Recent is a little bit more interesting, so I agree. I prefer him. And so the book definitely kind of ended on a high note in that sense, in that it wasn't as shit and boring as the rest of it. It's still bad. I don't understand why there's so much shattering and fracturing in the book. But if the sequels are more like the ending of the book, I definitely see why people are saying, read through this one and then it gets better because it does. Like, the ending is a lot better. Um, still not good. And I don't... This isn't me, like, saying I'm gonna read the sequels but it's better, definitely an improvement. And now we're finally at the end of the video. It took me so long to get through these six books. I spent basically the entire month of March coming back to them every now and again. I did read a ton of other books as well, but like every now and again coming back to reading books that I was expecting to hate. Now I thought we'd just take a quick look at how my expectations of these books compare to the reality. Let's start with the books I read from Rachel's video. The first was obviously Red, White and Royal Blue. My expected rating of this was one or two stars because I really didn't think that this was going to be for me just considering the romance and the unrealistic setup. And I ended up giving it 2.5 which isn't much better but still I was somewhat positively surprised by the way that the romance was written, like the writing itself wasn't bad, I thought it was funny at times, it wasn't cringy, it wasn't over the top, I just thought it was a cute romance, but with a lot of unnecessary elements that I could have definitely done without, and in too much length for sure. So still not a great book, 2.5 stars is pretty grim, but it's not a one star, so I didn't absolutely hate this one. The second book from her is a different story, Serpent and Dove. I expected to give about two or three stars. I thought there were going to be some redeeming qualities to the story, or that as I expected initially, I would just be able to kind of like mindlessly read it without having to think too much about it or just enjoy it for what it was. But I ended up giving it one star because I absolutely despised it. I thought it was a horrible time, especially the second half. I almost couldn't get through it and I just had to force myself. I skim read most of it. It was so dry and boring and the characters were absolutely ridiculous. The book didn't know what it was trying to do and it definitely didn't adhere to its own premise or the setup for characters or plot that it had done itself. So this was a complete shit show. Hated that one. 100% with you, Rachel, on this one. The books I read from Sophie's video were a really pleasant surprise. Well, not necessarily surprised because I did expect to actually enjoy them but it was a nice breath of fresh air in the midst of reading garbage so the bear and the nightingale i ended up giving 4.5 stars as opposed to my expected four i enjoyed it even more than i thought i love the setting i love the story i love the way it's written and i rewatched um 
Sophie's video, she said that she just felt like it was really, really dry and boring and she kept like kind of falling asleep. And I can totally sympathize with that because it is very, very, very slow paced. There isn't a lot going on, but for me, it was perfect and I absolutely enjoyed this one. And then for 90th House, I think we actually have a lot of the same criticisms. She said that she thought it was very convoluted and felt like it was kind of being multiple stories being told in one. And that was exactly my reaction as well. To me, it kind of felt more like the first step in a much bigger story. So I was more maybe lenient towards a few mistakes. And at the end of the day, I took more of the positives away from it than the negatives. My expected rating for this was two or three stars, given that I'm not usually the biggest Libra Dugo fan, but I ended up giving it a positive four. So I'm really pleased to have given this book a second chance, basically. And then finally, the books I read from Cindy, the first A Court of Thorns and Roses. My expected rating for this was a flat out one star because I thought it was going to be absolutely terrible. But in reading it, I realized that it's not necessarily the worst as much as it is just deathly boring and nothing happens for like 300 pages and it's just like the main characters like falling in love and mooning over each other and that's not really something that you want to like spend so much time on in your first book because there's nothing for the readers to really attach to and like actually get invested in that would sort of serve as a background to the romance. So I was bored for most of it, but I didn't abjectly hate it. And so I'm giving it a two star, slightly better than I expected, but um, not by much. And finally, Pride by Ibiza Boy. I expected to rate about a three star because I really didn't know what I was going into. But at the end of the day, I DNF'd it and I didn't give it a rating because I DNF'd it. And I don't think it's so much like that the book is just so, 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 so terrible. It's just like the, this wasn't for me. It didn't give me anything. I didn't connect to it. I don't know. Maybe other people would enjoy it more. But for me, this was a no-no and uh, so it doesn't actually get a rating. And that's it for all the books I read that booktubers hated last year. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment telling me if you did. Uh, I spent a lot of time on this as you can probably tell so I'd really appreciate it if you could give it some love, maybe share it with your friends and also let me know if you want me to do something like this again in the future and what ideas you would have for that please leave it in the comments. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, the usual, come back very soon for more videos, and I hope to see you back very soon. Have a lovely week. Bye.